thank you, Yahweh Elohim, that every time a shofar sounds, Allah, it's your voice. Every time a shofar sounds, it's calling Yahweh down. And every time a shofar sounds, my spirit gets super excited. Because one of these days, Yahweh Elohim will sound the shofar to fetch his bride. Can you imagine how that would sound? If the breath of life himself, if life himself blows a shofar, can you imagine those tones? Can you imagine the sound? And can you imagine how your spirit would just know this is my Abba? And I'm going home. Abba, let us not lose sight with everything happening around us, Yahweh. Let us not lose sight of the most important thing. And it's my relationship with you, Abba. It's my relationship with you. Because it doesn't matter how much I do and how much people see I do, he might say, I did not know you. Abba. May the congregation of CFWC never hear those words. Abba, because what we have taught our Father God as you've led us, Yahweh Elim, is nothing but relationship and covenant. Abba, next is missing with the word, me and me. Child of God, I want to tell you today that unforgiveness that you've been carrying, that fight you have with this one person, let it go. Let it go now. The dislike you have for a certain person or whatever because of your own personal motives, let it go. Because it's going to keep you from the face of our King. Is it worth it? God says, look at the lilies of the field. I clothe them even more beautiful than Solomon himself. Will I not look after you? I know it's hard being you in the country that we live in, but God says, I will provide for you. I will provide new work for you, says the Lord. I don't know who's that for. God says, stop worrying. Worship me. Keep my Sabbaths. Keep my word, says the Lord. Because obedience brings blessing. Child of God, why is it so hard for us just to do what Abba says? We need to know the voice of the shepherd because he's on his way. And I will never stop proclaiming that I see everything around me. He's coming. The Lion of Judah is coming, and every eye will see and every knee will bow. And those that thought there is and were there, you will see there is. And you will see the glory of the King as he fetches his bride in the air. You will see. Abba, change our hearts now, Yahweh, because your word said, if we don't change now, when you fetch your bride and Holy Spirit leaves, we won't change then. Because the one that convicts you and the one that heals you and the one that leads you is gone. You know that feeling, child of God, that you know God is here, that goosebumps you get, that you just start crying in the presence of God? That's Holy Spirit. That's God's Spirit. Now that's gone. I need you to hear this. Whatever you are struggling with and what's keeping you from the presence of Yahweh Elohim isn't worth it. Enough. It's enough now. The only one losing is you, my friend. It's enough. Today it ends. Today, Yahweh teaches us to 
put up a fence for the enemy and says, today I'm done. Because it was nikmah, it is done on the cross. Therefore I am done. I have nothing to say to you, Lucifer, in the name of Yeshua. Go. God will sort you out. And man, is he going to sort you out? It's not my problem. Our Father God, let us not move until you speak. Let us not move from selfish motives or whatever drives us, Yahweh, but let us move in your spirit because then there will be anointing, Yahweh, Elohim. If we move in your spirit, our Father God, your anointing breaks the yoke in the mighty name of Yeshua. Your anointing in your presence brings the healing, not the vessel, not the host pipe. <laughs> you, Yahweh. Abba Father God, I pray for, Daddy God, as we enter, enter into Pentecost, Abba Father God, I pray for a revival in South Africa. Abba Father God, I pray that Holy Spirit will be let loose like a fire in this country that will burn away everything that is not of you, that it will be on the news how people are worshiping and praising Abba Father God as this fire is spreading. May it start with us, Yahweh. May we be the change that we want to see around us, Yahweh. As good as places you need to start. We don't need big crowds, Yahweh. We need to be ourselves as you created us to be a vessel. Then your spirit flows, Yahweh. Have I thank you that we can just pour our hearts before you and thank you that you are faithful and you always listen, Yahweh. Daddy God, I want to pray that you anoint my heart with your love, our Father God, and with your fire as we bring this word tomorrow, today, our Father God. Daddy God, show us your heart in this Yahweh. Show us, Abba Father God. Show us which needs to be erected and what needs to be brought down. Thank you, Abba Father God. Thank you, Abba, that I can pray, Abba Father God, that each child sitting here, Abba Father God, these rumors of new viruses, Abba Father God, I rebuke them and I call them to dust in the mighty name of Yeshua. Abba, you are Jehovah Rapha, Yahweh. Abba, and you say that your blood runs through me the moment I became your child. I am adopted unto your own. I will not be sick in the mighty name of Yeshua. I will not stand for any virus, Yahweh, leave him. Especially not for a lie. Pulverize it, Yahweh, leave him in the mighty name of Yeshua. No sickness. No infirmity will stand before the great I am and he is here. I pray, Abba, that you move in your softness and in your love right now to heal every person in the mighty name of Yeshua. Every lung thing will go now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Every headache, every fever out in the mighty name of Yeshua. No infirmities welcome in this place. Go. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you for full restoration, full healing, mind, body, spirit in the mighty name of Yeshua. In your presence, Yahweh. Because that's what you do. Thank you, Abba, Father God. We praise you and we worship you, Yahweh, William, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 So living in South Africa, we know walls and fences all too well, don't we? In the natural, we have these six feet or eight feet walls with electric fencing on top, just to make double sure, right? We have these massive gates and entrances at estates or wherever we live at with these guard houses that pretty much check everything. Have you seen when you enter these really big estates, they scan your, your car license, they scan your driver's license, and depending on the time you enter and exit, these guards actually search your vehicle. Have you seen at some estates they actually do that? Um, these guards at these gates, they patrol the whole area or the estate. So these guards implemented at estates are part of the protection this wall of protection around the estate. And if these guards should be driving around an estate or in your area, um, 
You have something that you, what do you call it, community watch, right? Birdwag. Hey, you with me? Um, they're part of the protection of the community. So if they see something a little bit suspect, it's up to them to tell these people that they don't belong there. It's up to them to remove the enemy. It's up to those guards seeing that something is suspect to say, no, you need to go. You don't belong here. These are the ones entrusted with being like these mobile walls to the community and to a state. They need to keep the people in the area or living in that estate safe. So in our daily lives in the natural realm, we have learned that fences, gates, walls are good for us. Number one, it keeps us safe. It keeps our family safe. It keeps our pets safe. It keeps our stuff safe, right? Some of us have alarms with electric beams and cameras, all for security. It's not because you're bored at work and you want to watch something on your phone. It's all for security to keep you safe, right? Listen to what Songs of Solomon 5 verse 7 says. The watchmen that went about the city found me. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. When you look at the Hebrew word for walls, it's the word chuma. It means it's literally to join. It means a wall of protection or it means to be walled up. That's the one picture. So we all know the wonderful miracle of the walls of Jericho. Do you guys remember? Because you see, child of God, in biblical times, it was all about the wall and the gate. That's what made the city. That's what attracted other people to want to go live there because of the high walls and the big gate. And isn't it pretty much the same today? When you move into a neighborhood or you first drive around, you check how many houses have electric fencing, right? Because that's going to tell you a lot about the security in the area, right? And it's going to tell you how safe the area is. You look at the height of the walls. You look at the size of the gate and the size of the dog at the gate, right? We do that. Because society has taught us that walls, fences, and gates are good in the natural realm. Then we have these other walls that we talk about, and the Bible actually talks about, and lo and behold, the one that spoke about these walls is our friend David. Who better than David? So David speaks about these emotional walls. Listen to what Psalms 122 verse 7 says. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. So this wall... It's very, very interesting what he says. Peace be within thy walls. This wall, the first word we we look at, because it's got a few root words that I want to share with you, is hell. Hell. It means an army. But listen to this. It also means an entrenchment. It means to be pure It means a trench, like a ditch that you fall into. But listen to this, because it has a root word. And when I say this word, a lot of you will actually recognize this word. The root word of that is chayil. Chayil means a force, whether of men or something supernatural. It means army, it means wealth. But this chayil means strength, mighty power, and riches. But this very word, chayil, is the same word used for mighty men of valor and virtuous women 
It's that virtue. That's chayil. Are you starting to see the picture that David is talking about on the inside? It means to be worthy. This wall, peace within our walls, means to be worthy and virtuous and valiant and valor. But listen, if you dig it a bit deeper, it means to properly twist and twirl in a downward manner. Have you heard that thing? Oh, it's, it's downhill from here on. Not in a good way. That person really just spiraled down into the depth or into darkness or into this pit. It means to be writhed in pain, literally like your body is like wrenching in pain. It means to wait. It means to fall grievously because of pain. It means to be sorrowful, to wait carefully, and to be wounded really bad. Three descriptions, one word, that David is warning us about. Peace be within those walls. Because do you see this picture that David is warning us about? It's a trench that you perhaps fall into. It started out great with virtue and valor, with powers and riches, with wealth and so many resources that made you feel so worthy. But it formed a downward spiral, twisting and turning, creating this dance with the world that left you wounded and sorrowful as you wait patiently behind these massive walls that you have built so that trust can be regained because you fell grievously. And as I read these words, it sounds like David's life, right? His son that wanted to kill him, everything that happened in his house, how many times he asked Abba Father, God, please, I just want to lay down and I just want to sleep because every, everyone in my house actually wants to kill me. <laughs> I'm hated. I'm not loved. He understood that on the inside, putting up those walls because he trusts no one. Because he fell grievously. As I read this, How many of us can really say on the inside where not even your husband or your wife sees or your kids see or you don't let anybody else see? How many of us really have peace within our walls? That's actually happy with ourselves. Because the Hebrew word for that peace is a word you all know very well. It's the Hebrew word shalom. Shalom means to be well, to be happy, to be friendly, to be in good health, to rest, to be safe, to have favor, to have friends, to be whole. This is what he's saying, because can you see this peace that he spoke about is not a physical wall, but this is a wall in the hearts of our spirit, that he says, peace be within your walls. Because the peace, that shalom, is all characteristics of our Father's love. To be happy, to be friendly, to be fulfilled, to be whole, to be in good health. It's not a physical wall. Peace be within your walls as in your house. It's this house that our Father is talking about. It's like David is saying, ask everything you have gone through in your life and in your heart. Make sure you have that peace inside of you in the walls that you've built. Make sure that you are in good mental health. Make sure that you are, make sure that behind those walls that you've built, you heal and you are made whole. 
Because you see, child of God, something that's a bit of a misconcept that I've seen the last month or so that I've dealt with people is that walls and fences in our heart and our spirit are good. But for some other odd reason, people think it's a bad thing. People think it's a really bad thing, um, and you're kind of not like a people's person if you do that, and you're not compassionate enough if you do that. And I want to show you today what God has taught me about walls and fences in our hearts to keep us safe and to keep our, keep our salvation. It's really, really, really important. Because you see, child of God, it's not right to build a wall because human nature lets us build walls of offenses. The moment we're offended, we build a wall, right? You know those? <laughs> we will build these offenses of hurt because things didn't go my way or how I wanted it to go. Then we have these unhealthy walls and offenses, I'm saying offenses for a reason, built, that so many times we miss Yahweh himself trying to reach out to him trying to reach out to us, but we totally miss it because we're so busy with these walls and offenses that we miss the love. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the scars. What a great place to be. The moment we build these offenses, not of God, but from an emotional point of view. Proverbs 25, verse 28, listen to this. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. That rule means control, but if you look a bit deeper, it's got a rude word. But listen to this. It means to enclose. Do you see the wall? It means to close up. It means to keep safe. It means to shut up, not like be quiet. <laughs> It means literally like in you slamming these doors in front of someone's face, shutting the doors. He that has no rule over his spirit, if you don't have a wall around you, you have a problem. This is what it says in Proverbs. Modern day society, child of God, has brainwashed us into thinking that our gates and walls and fences are wrong. That we are not allowed to say no as a child of God. We are not allowed to say that I don't agree. That I am not allowed to dress according to today's fashion, etc., etc., um, because I can dress however I want to. Have you seen the fashion of today? Don't tell me you honor your body. If you dress differently, you're weird. This is the way I dress because I honor my body and I honor Yahweh Elohim. Deal with it. If you don't like it, please look away. <laughs> right? Have you seen, child of God, that in society, when you say you're a child of God, a Christian, all eyes are on you because now you have to do everything for everyone. Have you seen? And that you always have to smile and that you always have to say yes to everything. Can someone please give me a verse for that? Because the word of God is the only truth that sets me free, and I can't find that anywhere. Not even in the way that Yeshua dealt with people. If Yeshua lived today, I don't think he would be a very popular pastor. I love you, Abba Father. But... Because he kind of went to people and said, this is the truth. And then guess what he did? He turned around and walked away. What can you do? Like say, what do you learn? Dry or braai? I'm going to have to hand out sweets next time I'm preaching because no one would, be, would want to come. Right? Ons sense het die wat pas toer. Sy kyk nie eers vir mens nie. Sy het nie eers my drukkie gegeen al die tijd nie. Sy het vir my gesê, dry of braai. Did you ever read that Yeshua, ek weet nie, het in die rai gestaan en drukkies uitgedeel? 
Mm-mm. I read that he healed people, like miraculously. I read that so many people he gave food to, right? I read that he did miracles wherever he went, and he preached the word of our Father because he was the word himself. That's what I read. I don't read, I don't read anywhere that he had a congregation that he went to. En ek het ook nie gelees dat hy huisbesoek gedoen het die hele tyd nie. Did you read it? Mm-mm, nee, ek het ek nie. So how, just how, ek probeer 1 plus 1 doen. How did today's world have this checklist for a pastor or a leader what makes you good or not good enough according to how many times you've been at my house for a braai? Break my brain. Because I was taught by my mentor that if I want to be a good pastor and protect the sheep that God has entrusted me with to be a gatekeeper, I need to hear the voice of Yahweh Elohim. And sometimes that means, near, mm-mm, we're not going to do this. Mm-mm. God showed me this and this and this. We need to watch out for this and this and this. What has happened to us, child of God? Because it's infected the body of Christ so bad. Because as a leader or a pastor, and you can ask any leader, even as a Christian out there, I'm saying out there in the world, you're not allowed to say no. You're not allowed to say no, this is the boundary. The moment you say no, ask me, or you, you implement a new boundary, afterwards you hear the stories and the gossip, and this has actually really happened. You can actually ask Prof. Harry as well. Um, and I'm going to use the correct words that those people's word, that those people, the congregation members, it was congregation members of this very church used. I said it. Because it's the truth. The other one I recently heard is that you do not have the fruit or the love of a pastor. According to... So pastors and leaders of a church is crucified the moment they bring in gates, fences, and walls, according to the word of our Father. Because, according to the accuser of the brethren, and that's the spirit that hates walls and fences and gates, this is uncalled for, and it means that you have no heart for people. Do I really not have a heart for people, or did you just build a a, a fence? Because what I just said no to is not going to happen, and maybe you wanted it really bad. Because child of God, we all take offense, let's be honest. Sometimes things happen that we don't really like. But we have to start asking ourselves as mature children of our Father, what is really the problem here? Because by building these offenses in a church like CFWC, it gives the enemy leeway to come and destroy whatever you want. Having no walls and fences and gates is extremely dangerous for a child of God. I want to read you a story that you know very, very well that God led me to. Listen to this, 1 Samuel 2 verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when a man had offered the sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was still in seething, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. So what the Bible is doing here, what Samuel is describing how the offer, the sacrifice needs to go. And he struck it into a pan, a kettle, or a cauldron, or a pot, all that the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself. 
So did they in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came hither. Also therefore they burnt the fat. The priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest. He will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. Verse 16. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, he would answer him, Nay, that shall, that, but thou shalt give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for the men adhered the offering of the Lord. And can we just pause for this in a moment, because it's a lot of ceremonial stuff happening, and when you go leave, lift, uh, read Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you will see that what they did was not right according to what Yahweh Elohim said. But as I read this, I just paused, and I thought, but Yahweh, Eli loved you. That's why he was a priest. So why? Why are his sons this way? Why did his sons react in this like deceitful way? And I felt Holy Spirit so, 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 so loud and clear. And he told me, he says, easy, Zandri, they had no fences and walls and gates. Eli loved his son so much that maybe he didn't ever tell them no. Maybe everything they wanted, they always got. Maybe Eli did everything for them from this place of, I love you so much and I give you all that I can and that I have. Because remember, they grew up with their father Eli, Eli knowing Yahweh because he was a priest. Now, they're doing the priest's job. And I'm saying job because the heart was not there. Because how does the verse start? Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. They grew up in a house with a father who was a priest. Yet they chose to see it. And as I read this, I said, Abba, I don't understand that. He says, Sanji, here's the thing. Child of God, we need to remember. Just because someone goes to church doesn't make them a child of God. Sandri, how can you say that? What do you say? It's easy. If I go stand in a garage long enough, do I, do I become a car? Huh? Do I become a car? I have no characteristics of a car. Okay, maybe I have one because I can go zero to 103 seconds with my temper. I think that's like an M3. So that's the, this is the umfang of the characteristics that I get from a car. <laughs> if I stand long enough in a garage, do I become a car? If I sit long enough in the church pew, do I become a child of God? Hopefully. The fruit of the Spirit, the character of Yahweh, is what makes me a child of God. My covenant relationship with Him. Because the moment I have relationship, the body will recognize the fruit. Yes? Not the fact that I sit in church Sunday after Sunday. Because the Word of God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I can't sit here Sunday after Sunday and then walk out here and do not keep His commandments. Who am I fooling, guys? This is the truth. We need to face it before Yeshua comes. We need to face it now. Do you see, child of God, that every person sitting in a congregation are all under construction? They're all in different phases of construction. The sons of Eli did not know God. They acted as priests. And the scary part is when you look at the Hebrew pictures in these verses, guys, it's too much to look at today. You see this picture that takes you right back to Eden. This verse 13, 14, 15, 16, that it tells you, okay, this is what they did with the, with the meat and, 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 and. 
When you start uncovering the Hebrew in these verses, it draws this picture of absolute vanity that takes us back to Eden. Quick question. Have you heard, I know, the teenagers of today, they use this word slay. Oh, that, that girl slays. This guy slay, huh? Helena, have you heard it? I think I'm using it wrong. I'm giving away my age. I think I'm using it totally wrong. <laughs> they use this word slay, and they'll have these t-shirts that say slay. So, it means that someone totally killed something, apparently. I think. <laughs> I think that's the translation. I think. <laughs> that's what I figured out. It means that someone totally nailed something, they killed it if they slayed it. Okay? Guys, God is so full of detail and so on par, it's, it's actually not even funny. So, when you look at these verses... In Hebrew, the Word of God says, listen to this, because these are the exact words when you look at the Hebrew and you start looking at how they made the meat and you take out these Hebrew, listen to what it says. These are people that slay in the flesh, that are vain about their physical appearance. Everything they do is for their own motives and plans. They will take the choiciest part and the best part for them, and they will give Yahweh whatever is left. Who knew? Yahweh knew the word slay before we thought of it. And not in a good way. Because he refers to it in his word as a bad thing. Say, so these are people that's focused on this temple. How good I look. How my hair is done. And everything of the best they will take for themselves. And they will give Yahweh whatever is left the scrap. This is the picture, because it's all about them. Doesn't it sound familiar? Eve, did God not say, Ach, Eve, he's scared. He's just scared. Yahweh is scared that you will be like him if you eat this fruit. Eat it. You're allowed to, Eve. That is what freedom is for, Eve. No one will tell you what to do and when to do it, Eve. Because that's restriction and restriction is wrong. Freedom, Eve. Freedom is to do whatever you want, how you want, when you want. That's freedom, Eve. Eve, eat the fruit. It's lekker. Have you seen that? Have you seen, child of God, that the teenagers of these days have actually no respect for elderly? I have seen personally our teenagers have no respect for pastors and leaders in this church. How they do and say whatever they want because that's how they express their feelings and get freedom because they have to make their own choices. I've seen on camps how teenagers challenge any form of respect and leadership and authority. And I'm saying teenagers, and then it's 13, 14. Here's my fighting size me. And the horrible truth is that when you start speaking to that child that has never heard the word no, and they, he was taught that it was okay to challenge someone. He or she has never heard it's enough now. He or she has never had any boundaries or fences, so now they come to a camp and they so desperately want a boundary and a fence because they don't feel loved at this moment in time. So while Eli's sons, whose sin was great before the Lord, was busy rebelling in the very same temple under that same covering of Eli, and the leadership of Eli from a really young age was Samuel. Listen to this, verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord. Being a child, 
girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from here to here when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went up to their own home. Listen to this, did you know this? And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Did you know that Hannah had more kids? His mother, Hannah, came up every year. Can you just see it? A little coat that was made for him. And when you look at the Hebrew picture of this little coat, guys, this is a garment, a covering that protects you from all around you. Isn't this a beautiful picture that, who brought it to him? His mother. He's in the same temple as Eli's sons. Can you see how God protected him? A covering protected him. It also means in Hebrew something that by covering cuts you off from the rest. Do you see the wall, child of God? That Yahweh Elohim instituted. Do you see that? Do you see the covering that protected him from all, was going, all that was going on around him? Eli's sons were in, the, in this temple and he had to face them every day. Yet Samuel served the Lord and did the right thing. Samuel had a wall protecting him. And as I read this, I thought maybe it was something that his mother taught him. That's why the Bible so specifically says his mom brought it to him yearly. Why was it so specific? Could it be that she taught him before she brought him to the temple? You know when you drop off your kids, my mom used to do it? Say, no, mooi as a blief in donkey. Ek wil nie wat die mense sê is ongeskik nie. Ja, mama. Still do it, moms? Gedraan het jouself. Moe nie sweet eet nie. Zandri, moe nie al die kos reik voor jy dit eet nie. I did that. Do you think maybe that Samuel's mom taught him that covering? And that's why the Bible specifically says Hannah bought him a little coat, this covering, this wall to the temple. That in this mess of what Eli's son are doing, sons are doing out of vanity, taking everything for themselves and giving the crumbs to Yahweh, can you see this picture in this mess of everything? Hannah came and gave her first and her best, Samuel, to Yahweh Elohim. And what happened? Hannah was blessed with more sons and more daughters because the moment Hannah obeyed and stayed within the walls and the fences of the word of God, she gave her best to Yahweh Elohim. The blessing flowed. Do you see that? Yah, Anna was obedient to what Yahweh Elohim said. But I want to read to you the very first picture as we close. The very first picture of being hedged in. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So verse 8 that says, And the Lord God planted a garden. That garden is the Hebrew word gun, you guys have heard many a times. 
it means a garden as in fenced in. Like the botanical gardens, it's fenced in. You have to go through a gate, right? You with me? It's protected. It's fenced in. But when you look at the root of that gun, it gives you this picture to hedge about, to genuinely protect and to defend. Yahweh created a garden for our protection. That's what, was it, what his heart was from the very start. He consecrated and set apart a piece of the whole of the world. He fenced it in. And then he made Adam and Eve. Can you see the heart of the Father that wanted to protect us from the very beginning? Do you see that? From the very beginning, we were walled and fenced in. And it wasn't a bad thing. Then we ate the fruit. All because of our own vanity. And today, if a pastor or a leader warns the sheep not to listen to strange doctrines and gives them the truth from the word of our Father, oh, I've heard this many a times, Ach, Zandri, you are not the only church who has the truth. We all serve the same God and they teach the same truth. Yeah? We teach the same truth. That's why you run through fire tunnels. So the snakes can fall off you in the spirit. Yeah? No. Please give me the verse where I need to drip the communion grape, grape juice, seven times in a plate before I drink it. Excuse? I'm with Vardun. Now you have to, before you take communion, you have to drip the grape juice seven times. It's for all the places where Yeshua bled. Mm, what's a grape juice drink, Yeli? You fermented. But we do all do the same truth. So, I'm all doing yourself the war, right? The Word of God says you taste everything according to the Word. The Word. Please give me the verse. Because if it's in the, if, if it's in the Bible, I'll do it. But if it's not there, I'm going to tell you you're busy with a false doctrine, eh? Because it's not in the Word of God, and the Word of God is what sets you free, because that's Him. All these other stuffies. It's not Him. If He wanted it, Trust me, you would have mentioned it. You see, child of God, the moment in a leadership or as a Christian you start saying, no, it's wrong. Something that our Father, Father has taught me in this journey with Him in a church is that this journey with our Father and being an active part of the body of Christ, living out your purpose is full of bumps in the road, guys. And as Abba showed me this road that I was walking, I hear these words of Holy Spirit that says, Zandri, in leadership you taste teachability in your leaders with setting boundaries. And at first I was like, I couldn't quite understand. And then God reminded me that when you hit a bump in the road and sometimes stuff happens that you don't really like or stuff don't work out, as you thought it would be. And God took me back to many years ago, like 12 years ago, something that happened with me because I was part of the very first band in CFWC. And one day, out of the blue, um, the band just voted, I'm not allowed to be part of it anymore. I'm not allowed to sing anymore. They worked very directly as me was, we don't like your singing or your personality. And we don't think it fits in with the band. And afterwards, I realized and I actually heard what the real story was. And it was like someone went to them and it was gossip stories or whatever. And they actually believed it. And they didn't believe in me, who I was, and my relationship with Yahweh William. So they decided they just blatantly kicked me out. So now Zandri had a choice. And I remembered so well that day. Because I can now build an offense of hurt. 
because it was really not fair in the way they handled it or the way that they actually treated me or not even pray about it. And I remember that day that you always said you could either build a wall that will trust no one again or you can learn from it. And in worship, God has learned me so much. God has taught me that when I stand in the sound booth and sing, it's the same to Yahweh because He hears me. He doesn't hear the band first because they have mics, and then somewhere in the crowd He goes, mm, oh, there's Andre. It doesn't work with our Father like that. He hears me, and He loves me when I just sing. He loves when I just sing like sounds or like words because that was actually part of a prophetic word that I received, that without singing a word, the moment you sing, the atmosphere will shift. The moment you sing, people will heal. So people always told me, told me they can't hear what I sing or would always really break me down when it came to singing. Never really helpful, but they, it was not like they were trying to help me. It was just to break me down because please just don't come near us. Until today, guys, I can testify that word of our Father that is true and that is real because sometimes I will just go, oh, whatever, la, 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 whatever. I won't even say a real word and I can feel the presence of Holy Spirit. I have learned through that, which I would have never knew, that I have really good ears when it comes to sound. I hear different sounds really well. And because they kicked me out, I learned mixing. I learned how to create a sound. And I've learned that mixing a band gives Abba Father just as much glory as the one singing behind the mic. I've learned that mixing a band can prepare the atmosphere for Holy Spirit to move in. Sometimes, guys, if we get a no, Sometimes there's a boundary. Sometimes there's accountability for my actions and my words. The amazing thing is the word of our Father gives us all these boundaries and how to apply them in His word. From accountability, yes, from accountability to even don't buy at your friend's house every weekend. No jokes. The word of God warns you Abba does that to protect us. The moment you as child of God in this congregation rebel, or let's use the right people that always, uh, the words that people always use, they won't say they rebel, they will say, I don't agree with this or I would have done it differently. That's their way of telling you, I don't like you and what you've done. The moment you do that, you rebel against the system of authority that Yahweh himself, Elohim himself, put in place. You're not rebelling against me. Don't get me wrong. And you have to listen carefully, child of God. I'm not talking about leaders and pastors making horrible decisions that hurt people and are all vanity driven. We cannot submit under that. We cannot submit under that. Boundaries and fences as a Christian, as a child of God, when you go to your workplace, when you are in your home, when you work with your children, needs to be implemented from Yahweh Elohim's word. You have to use the word of our Father. Yahweh didn't take away Adam and Eve's freedom by placing them in Eden. He didn't take away any freedom. He was trying to protect them. No doesn't mean he doesn't love us. No means, I want to protect you, Zandri, of something you don't see right now, but you have to trust me. Child of God, in your heart, honestly, between you and our Father, how many times have we, have our tempers flared up the moment there was a boundary? How many times have we used the term, I don't agree with their choice? And in that, how many times, if you don't agree with a leader or a pastor or someone at work, a manager or whatever, how many times have you actually gone to that person and say, I know you're a child of God and I know you probably prayed about this. 
I know you hear God's voice. Can I ask you, please guide me to understand and teach me why you implemented this and this and this. Then, then I listen with an open heart and I ask our Father to change my will and my views so that I can be part of the team and not be the stumbling block to the sheep around me. Do we do that? Because that's the word of God says we need to be doing. Do we do that? It's easier to build a fence of our fence, right? Child of God, there where you are in your life, in your family, we need walls to protect us. We need fences to protect us. You know what's so ironic that our father showed me? We moan in load shedding if the electric fencing is off. Yet there's always this massive fight when it comes to what you're allowed to eat and not to eat, according to the word of Yahweh. You moan the electric fence is off in the natural. When his columns hunt very meat clip. But when Yahweh Elohim comes, the one that created us puts a fence for our health and our well-being. Then we freak out. We want to put that off in the spirit. Ach man, can my salvation fill over me? We want to put the electric fence off in the spirit, but in the natural we want to put it on. What do you think is going to happen? How is it going to work out for us if we put off that electric fence, which is the word of God that tells us what to do and not to do in the spirit? How do you think that's going to work out for us? Mm. Let's put off the electric fence regarding Shabbat and where, what the word say, says and where the word says you're not allowed to work. Not you, nor anyone for you. You're not allowed to trade. It's a fence to keep us safe. And then, when we put off the electric fence, and then our finances don't work, we're all tired all the time, constant battles, then we wonder. I want to tell you, child of God, put on the electric fence in the spirit. The fence in the spirit keeps the enemy away. It keeps you safe. It keeps you in perfect peace. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you fulfilled. Maybe today is a good day to rewire some of our fences, right? Maybe people pleasing that broke our walls need to go today. Maybe my own motives need to go that disables the electric fence in the spirit. Maybe hurt and fear and distrust that walled me in needs to go today so that Yahweh Elohim can cover me and hedge me in, in his garden. God is keeping his children safe because that's his promise. He says, my name is a strong tower. He's not trying to be difficult when he says, don't do this or don't do that. He's fencing you in. To protect you as he did in Eden. But you see, child of God, the same as in Eden and the same as Eli's two sons, there will always be a choice that no one else can make except you and yourself. You can't even make it for your kids. They have to make it for themselves, and that's covenant. Because in Eden was still the tree of good and evil. Because true love is a choice. He doesn't break down the door and says, I'm coming in, you have to love me. True love hung on a cross by choice. His blood covers us. It's time to put a wall up of I am no longer a people, people pleaser, but I will do as God says, even if you don't like it. Because I fear Yahweh Elohim. Because he is the one that gives me life and keeps me alive. And he is the one that put purpose in my veins.
it's time to break down those emotional walls that we've built up for so many years that because of hurt, I do not trust people anymore. I cannot see the love around me because I'm walled in so bad and everything is horrible. It's time to break down those walls and let Yahweh Elohim cover you. These electric fences that we have of distrust and no faith, let Abba break them down today and give you that reassurance of his love and of his faithfulness that wherever you go, he will open the sea and he will cover you from, from behind, from front, left, right. He encompass his bride. Today is a good day to let all of that go. Let's pray together. us with your word, Yahweh. Come wash us with your word, our Father God. Because he showed me that so many of us has built these walls so high that not your city doesn't have any water. It needs water. It needs living water flowing. Abba, sometimes we get really hurt, Abba, for the God, and we build these fences and walls that are not of you, Yahweh. Abba, for the God, and we want to come today, Abba, for the God, by the blood of the Lamb, Yahweh. And we want to ask you, Daddy God, come pulverize these walls that are not of you, Abba. Come teach us, Abba, for the God, how to build healthy walls as your word permits us. Because some things a child of God does not tolerate. And that becomes the boundary and the wall. Abba Father, your word is our wall and is our boundary. Your word, Abba, that is faithful, that is true, that never lies. That is the boundary and our wall. Raise it up today, Yahweh. Raise it up today, our Father God. As you wash us with your word, our Father God, and in our hearts of hearts, we just, how we break down these emotional walls that we've built up, Yahweh. That sometimes keeps us from our purpose, Abba. Let them fall down in the mighty name of Yeshua to your glory. Let the bride rise up, Abba, protected and hedged in, in your word, Abba, Father God, as an army, not falling in a trench of emotions, no, but as virtuous women and mighty men of valor. Let us rise up, Abba, let us show the world that no means I love you. No means I'm protecting you. Abba, I want to ask today that you will take our emotions, Yahweh Elohim, and our plans and submit it under your will and your authority, Abba, for the God, that we will not move until you speak. Because that is what that song is about. I will not move. Doesn't matter how I feel or how it looks. I will not move until you speak, Yahweh Elohim. Thank you, Abba Father God, that I can pray that you would show us, Abba Father God, in our relationships. In CFWC, Abba Father God. In each ministry under CFWC, Abba Father God. In our houses, Yahweh William, show us the walls and the boundaries that we need to put in place for protection of our families. Show us. Because your word is full of it, Yahweh. Show us the truth. The 
way and the life. We praise you, Abba, Father God, and we honor you, Abba. Teach us, Abba. Fill us, Abba, Father God, with your spirit, with the fruit of your love, Yahweh. Because that puts up a boundary to the enemy. Show us how to keep the enemy out, Abba, because sometimes we build these walls and we actually keep the enemy inside. It ends today in the mighty name of Yeshua. Every wall breaking down in the mighty name of Yeshua. Every emotional uh, trauma wall, Abba Father God, will break down now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba Father God, for healing that's flowing, Abba Father God, as we just surrender to you, Yahweh, and that you just teach us, Abba Father God, from our work to our house to our intimacy with you, Yahweh, where to put up a wall and a fence. Thank you, Abba Father God. We praise you, Abba Father God, and we honor you. Thank you, Abba Father God, that you are the wall protecting us, Yahweh Elohim. That your name is a strong tower, Abba Father God. And that we don't need to be afraid. Because my God is for me, who can be against me? My Abba says, I need to be still and he will fight for me. That's a wall, a wall of fire. We praise you, Abba, and we honor you in the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach. Thank you, Abba, for the God. Amen and amen. Amen. May you have an awesome Sunday. Hallelujah.